It is now time for the world famous Butch and Bob Show, brought to you by First Southern Bank, Vans Barbecue, Murphy Builder Supply, and by O'Quinn and Associates. Hi, I'm Mandy Yeomans. And I'm Raymond Brown with First Southern Bank. As your locally owned community bank, we're here to help our community grow. Our customers are why we are here. You can tell we want your business. We offer all types of deposit products, personal and business. We have fast, efficient service, and yes, we have online banking too. I'm sure we have an account to fit your needs. Stop by or call us at 912-588-1010 and see how First Southern Bank can help you. For FDIC Equal Housing Lender. When it comes to barbecue, Vans Barbecue and Jessup is the place to be. A small family-owned business located at 1876 on the Savannah Highway. Vans Barbecue has lunch and dinner specials. Stop by or call to make an order. The number to call, 427-3358. Vans Barbecue's new manager is Sarah Van. Vans Barbecue offers potato salad, coleslaw, baked beans, and don't forget their delicious mac and cheese. Also, check out their shrimp plates, the best in town. Yes, when it comes to the barbecue, head to Vans Barbecue, locally owned and operated. Stop by and tell them the big dog sent you. Once again, the number to order, 427-3358. Since 1946, Murphy's Builder Supply has been serving the folks of Jessup, Wayne, and surrounding counties with quality products and knowledgeable service. Matter of fact, they feel they sell service first to make sure you get exactly what you need for your home improvement projects. And with each employee at Murphy's being there for 10 years or more, you know you're talking with someone with the experience to help you with building supplies, tools, paint, and all the things you need from a full-service hardware store. The best choice in home improvement is Murphy's Builder Supply, 156 Northeast Broad Street, Jessup. Are you looking for an insurance company that you can call and talk to a live person? Are you looking for an insurance company where you can walk in and talk to an agent? Are you looking for an insurance company that offers multiple companies so they can try and get you the best rate? If you said yes to any of these, then you need to call or come by Oakwin & Associates Insurance Financial Services. We offer multiple companies so we can find the best fit for you. Give us a call at 385-1000 or stop by our office at 212 South First Street right here in Jessup. The following is an exclusive presentation of Jessup Broadcasting, the sports leader in Southeast Georgia. World famous. The world famous Butch and Bob Show. World famous Butch and Bob show right here on WIFO, 105.5 FM and Jessup, Big Dog Country Radio. And Bob, big victory for the Jolly Jackets last night. We had a big win, so it's the big win, or the big game on Thursday. I encourage everybody to go up. Get to play for a region championship tomorrow night. So. That's right. You know, we control our own destiny. You know, we're not like BC, so we got to wait for somebody to lose. Right. We control our own destiny. We've dominated Southeast Bullock the first two games, and hopefully we can continue that domination on Thursday, win that game, win the region, and then host the first round of state playoffs next Monday at Howard right. Bo Warnfield. And we'll have the matchup and all the details, ticket prices, things like that on Friday Sportscast because it gets underway Monday, uh, most likely a doubleheader. Monday afternoon around 4.30. So we'll know who the opponent is by Friday. Okay. Well, sounds good. Well, we've got Robin in here from the Odom Homecoming Committee. And Robin, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Hanging in there. You're just hanging in there, huh? Yep. yep. It's and a beautiful so, day out there today. Gorgeous day today. It all is. this week, all the way through Friday. we got a chance to rain on Saturday, but boy, this week's just been a gorgeous week. Mm-hmm. And uh, the Odom Homecoming Committee... You know, y'all do a lot more activities than just October, okay? Mm-hmm. Y'all got a lot of activities that go on during the course of the year to help uh, with the Odom Home Committee, Committee and the things that y'all do for the community of Odom. So tell us um, what's going on and what you're going to be doing. Well, and we do try to keep things going on for the Odom community as much as we can during the year. Um, this Saturday... April 22nd, we have our first food truck festival. This is something that um, people have been asking for, and so um, we got together and decided that we would try this out. We have about 15 food vendors coming from all over South Georgia. Um, Just to name a few, we have Amos Willie food truck coming, um, Beach Bum Snow Biz, Ramblin' Rose, Kona Ice, Paradise Island Cuisine, which is the Jamaican um, food. We have Slangin' Plates, Coastal Creamery with the ice cream, Garcia Brothers. They have a variety of food with smash burgers and different things. Um, Keller Woodfire Pizza, 
Brothers Seafood and Sweet Dixie Barbecue, just to name a few. So we're going to have a wide variety, going to have mocktails, going to have um, shaved ice, ice cream, just about anything you can look for, we're going to have there on the square. Um, so you have the food trucks around the square? We'll have the food tra- trucks around the square. There won't be any arts or crafts or anything. It'll be only food trucks. Um, we'll have entertainment starting at 11. Um, we'll have some local entertainment um, during the day. Grace Under Fire will be there, James Hamilton, Connor Flowers. Um, And then at 6 that night, we'll have a concert, excuse me, with Lauren Marie. Um, Lauren Marie was in the top 100 um, of um, American Idol, I think in 2016. And she was also named Country Female Artist of the Year in 2021 for Georgia. Um, and so she'll be there from 6 to 8 performing. Food trucks will be there from 11 a.m. Open and ready to serve until 8 p.m. Okay, so you've got entertainment starting at what time again? At 11. At 11, and they will be up there on the stage mm-hmm. uh, performing, entertaining during the course of the day. Yes. All the way until 8 o'clock that night. Yes, okay? yes. It's going to be a full so, day. So people will be able to enjoy the entertainment. And you'll have food trucks and booths set up all around the square there, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just food trucks. We'll have tables and chairs set up so that you can sit there, eat, enjoy the um, entertainment. You're welcome to bring your your own chairs if you like to do that and sit as well. Um, and we're just looking for a fun-filled day. And the event is free. Just pay for the food, right? That's right. The so the entertainment is free. Is free. Mm-hmm. Okay, all now, free. You, you get all this. What does the Odom Homecoming Committee get out of this, of putting um, this together? Just just really the rental space for the trucks. Okay, so the, is all, all these so, trucks pay rental space. Okay? Yes, it's really a give back, you know, too. We don't really make a whole lot of money on this event mm-hmm. um you know because we do pay the entertainer um the con for the concert um so it's you know it's kind of, kind a, of a, break a break even, even thing of, yeah. yeah but um but it's something great for the community so we hope that rain holds off a little bit saturday and uh everybody can come out and enjoy the enjoy the day now is this the first time that you've held this food food truck event this is the first time for the so. food truck event. All right. So mm-hmm. you got all these food trucks coming in. So, folks, don't eat much on Friday. Nothing Saturday morning. <laughs> That's right. And then bring that big old appetite to uh, Odom on Saturday as you'll have the, you'll be able to go around and get food from a ton of food trucks there. All type of food you can think of just about. Yeah. Yeah. You can dance it off and eat a little more. That's right. You're going to have the <laughs> entertainment played. you got the stage there. And just have a good old time there in Odom on this Saturday, starting at at eleven at o'clock. eleven o'clock, going to eight p.m. That's right. So make plans to be in Odom this week. You know, it used to be the Odom Home Committee just planned that week of of Odom Homecoming right there at the end of September, first of October. Mm-hmm. But now y'all do different events all during the year to bring folks into the city of Odom uh, during the course of the year. We do. And if you need any more information, you can call Odom City Hall. Um, as for Miss Jan or myself, I'll be there today. Um, 912-586-2211. If you need any information on the food truck vendors, um, you can call Vicki Higgs. She's our new chairman of the Odom Homecoming Committee. Her number is 912-294-5629. Okay. Now, Robin, you worked for the city of Odom for a long time. I did. And then, of course, uh, Cheyenne, your cohort there, worked with you for a long time. She did. In the city of Odom. Now, neither one of y'all are now currently working for the city of Odom. That's right. Now, you're helping out with the Odom Homecoming Committee. Cheyenne has taken a job out of town, so she drives back and forth, so you don't have time to, to really work much on the committee at all. So tell us about the two new folks in the city hall there in Odom. Okay, Miss Jan O'Quinn. Jan or Janice? Ja- well, her her name is Janice. We call her Jan for short. Okay, just call but, her. Jan. And most people do. You'll know her. She worked for the Wayne County Tag Office for about thirteen years. Okay. She's been with us for two years. Um, she is the new clerk. Um, and then um, Charity McGee. Um, she is also an Odom girl. Um, she grew up in Odom. Um, her father has served with the um, 
volunteer fire department in Odom for a long time, and she has kind of settled down, her and her husband and family, and come back to Odom. And so we're glad to have her as a part. She's the assistant um, clerk. Okay. Yeah. So you got Jan O'Quinn, clerk there in Odom, and Charity McGee, the assistant clerk. Uh, so new folks there taking over big shoes to fill with Robin and Cheyenne, <laughs> and uh, we wish them the best. We do. We yep. do. They're coming along doing really good. So. All right. So, Bob, questions, comments, or anything for uh, she Robin might, this morning? Might answer. How many food trucks are coming? Um, Fifteen. Fifteen. Mm-hmm. Just all types 15. of different food? All types of different food, anything from ice cream we've got jamaican there's going to be shrimp there's going to be barbecue um there's going to be ice cream mocktails not cocktails but mocktails mocktails are uh, mixed drinks mixed drinks with no alcohol with no alcohol okay all Mm -hmm. right so uh, you said pizza we're gonna have pretzels pretzel dogs um we have a couple of variety trucks that will do anything from salads to hamburgers to you know, whatever you, whatever you want, uh, wraps, you know, just mm-hmm. a good variety of food. Do these come from all over the place or just? Yes, they come from all over. I think the Jamaican people are from Applin County. We have some from Bacon County. Um, I think there's Douglas, Statesboro, just all so over. All and over. Jessup, uh, two or three from Jessup as well. Wow. 15 so. food trucks around the square in Odom this Saturday yeah. from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m., you can just bring that appetite, enjoy yourself, and see all these different food trucks, enjoy their food, and enjoy the entertainment that's going to be going on all afternoon into the evening at 8 o'clock. Yep, and the fellowship. Bring your family in. Bring the family. Have a good have old a time. Have a good family Odom. day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, Bob, anything else for, for Robin? This is amazing. First time we've heard see. about it, so yeah. Yeah, I'm glad that uh, it's going on. Thank you. All right. All right, you're I appreciate that. Are you already planning October days? That yes, we are already planning what, what October day. It's, it's getting close to a milestone, right? Is it? Um, yeah, I think this will be forty-eight. I was going to say it's getting close. So to, getting, getting close getting to, to fifty. 50 right, yeah, so yeah. So, I believe this is forty-eight. Okay, you got all forty-eight t-shirts? No, <laughs> <laughs> not anymore. Not anymore. You know I, what? Yeah, they get a T-shirt every year. Right. right. I just wonder if she had all 48 T-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> not quite. I got a lot in my, uh, uh, in my closet, but not, not near that many. Yeah, yeah, I do as well, but um, through the years, you know. But uh, I have been a part of it. Um, of course, I live there in Odom, so it started in 1975, and I've been a part of it since it started. I was 15 when it started. Well, that would be a nice so. display if you could, you'd have all those T-shirts in it throughout the years because mm-hmm. they do it you know yeah. the t-shirt's yeah. always a highlight of the of them dave you it know, is. like i said i'm like but yes. i got several that i still have i don't have all the ones but over the years I've, some of those are pretty nice t-shirts mm-hmm. okay i have been well food truck day in odom georgia this saturday this saturday from 8 a.m to 8 p.m 15 food trucks there with every type of food that you can think of plus dessert items along with regular food entertainment there on the stage all day into eight o'clock at night just great entertainment they got lined up so make sure you're in odom georgia this saturday anytime from 11 a.m to 8 p.m Robin, you take care and good seeing you. Thank you, you too. All right, we'll be back more of the world famous Butch and Bob show in a moment. South Georgia weather. Here's your WIFO forecast. Sunny for today, light southeast breeze, highs mid 80s, clear mid 50s for tonight. Sunny upper 80s tomorrow, upper 50s tomorrow night. Friday, mostly sunny mid 80s. Then Saturday, mostly cloudy early, a slight chance of showers and thunderstorms. Later, more partly sunny. Highs, upper 70s. Sunday, sunshine, breezy, cooler, upper 60s. Georgia Chief Meteorologist John Weatherby in the GNN Weather Center. When further treatment is no longer an option, hospice can provide services to manage symptoms and difficulties caused by illness. Emotional, psychosocial, and spiritual care, as well as support to the families and caregivers, are all part of hospice care. Hospice of South Georgia has been a part of the health community in Wayne and surrounding counties since 1998. The professional yet compassionate attention provided by our staff is unsurpassed. Widely supported by donations from the local population, Hospice of South Georgia is the local nonprofit 
Hospice in Wayne County. Our administrative office is located at 1625 Sunset Boulevard, and Hospice of South Georgia accepts anyone who meets hospice criteria, regardless of their ability to pay. Please call 912-588-0080 to speak with someone about hospice care. That was 912-588-0080. We are your hometown hospice, and we are here to serve you. Hospice of South Georgia, working to add life to your days. 105.5 FM and Jess of Big Dog Country Radio, WIFO. Good morning. Appreciate you tuning in to Big Dog Country Radio, the morning show right here on WIFO, world-famous Butch and Bob show, for this 19th day of April. And, Bob, they're, they're still kind of mulling over, just chewing the fat there, trying to figure out who they want to be the new county administrator, right? Yeah, the worry is they're... Possibly could have a call meeting Monday to make the announcement. So, but after yesterday's second round interviews, several commissioners stated they just would like some more time to mull it over, make the decision. So, but the word from several commissioners is the special call meeting could take place Monday morning to make the announcement. Okay. Well, we'll see what happens. It was a real interesting meeting yesterday in the work session. You know, this ambulance thing, just uh, it's amazing. A lot of information was given, but you know. The state recommends you have three ambulances for every, t- or you have an ambulance for every 10,000 people, mm-hmm. which Wayne County should have three, but they only have two. So they have what they call this uh, emergency response, rapid response person who, with like the 911 call comes in and the ambulances are out, he's he has the ability as a paramedic to arrive on the scene and, you know, fix the situation. But right. Listening to the EMTs and paramedics, they say it's a dying breed. I mean, they don't really get paid a lot of money, so this, they got three positions open. They can't fill them. It's like everybody else looking for employees can't find them. But it's definitely an issue at the county that the county commissioners are trying to address and try to, you know, because when you when you pick up the phone and you have an emergency and dial nine one one, you you, you, you expect, expect somebody yeah, to you show expect up. somebody to show up. So. It so right now we have two crews, two, two crews, ambulances, two and we need another ambulance, yeah, another crew. Right. And the, 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 the perplexing thing yesterday, apparently a year and a half ago, the commissioners put money in the budget for a, another half a truck, but uh-huh. apparently that was never put in the budget. So that's the perplexing question. Why wasn't it put in the budget? Why it wasn't was it voted on? Why was it put in it there? It was voted on by the, the full commissions, what the minutes show. So I'm not sure where that money went and what happened there but that was there's just a lot of good information yesterday but like i said it's a problem that needs to be addressed like i said they got one lawsuit pending in court you know where they 911 was called and no one responded so that family's suing the county so not sure how that's going to pan out but i said the county's trying to address this situation now the rapid uh, response guy why are they considering not keeping that person? well they they don't know they like I said, it's really not the position; it's the the way it's written up. But mm-hmm. I don't think people understand. You know, they, is they, this person they, apparently they don't have an ambulance made, or anything? Uh, he made, but he made forty one calls last year. I think just goes said. out on his own, right? right. And sees well, the person well, without an ambulance, right? right? But, but but he does so much more. They they explain he's the guy that dots the eyes, crosses the t's with all the paperwork, and does oh, okay. everything. You know, he, he has he wears like three or four hats, right? You know, he's just there, and you know, like. If he's in the office and the two ambulances are out and the call comes in, he has the knowledge and know how to go to the emergency and, and wait. Till, right. you know, so why till, don't they want this position anymore if it's that important? Well, they're, they're talking about doing away with the position. Is I don't think they, like I said, I think they're just trying to gather information. There's just the way they explained it yesterday, the consensus yesterday was the description of that rapid response position, position. Is, is not written correctly. It's like they, well, why don't they just rewrite it so they well, get rid of the position? Well, <laughs> that's the decision that the board has to make. If, we're, if, if we need that uh, position, we need that know. person to help out, then why yeah, get rid of it? I think I, was, I think it was clear last or yesterday that they, they need that position. They need that person. So right. Because I don't, I don't, if you're so, down the avenue, you need something. Right, so, but it's just a big issue. I didn't realize there was such an issue in the county, but it's a, you know apparently it's a huge issue that we just don't have enough ambulance uh, coverage in the county right now with 30,000 people. So. I said these people overworked, underpaid. I can't believe they they gave the starting salary of a paramedic EMT. Mm-hmm. I, I almost fell over. I mean, I thought for sure it'd be a lot more. I mean, they're not making they're making peanuts for saving folks' lives. All right. Yeah. You want to take a guess on what the starting salary? I have is? no idea. I'm not gonna take a guess. You know, not gonna take a guess. Not gonna take a guess. 
<laughs> not going to take a guess, but what is it? 19000 19000 for a full time? That's what they stated last night. At the earliest day that they work 12 hour shifts. Yeah, they work and they work to the bone. Like I said, they're not in it for the money. They do it because they love it. But still, I was just shocked at the starting salary. Wow. I thought it would be a lot, a lot higher. It would be a lot higher than that for someone who's um, an EMS person. But there are a lot of EMTs there, a lot of paramedics there. You know, they're all concerned. You know, mm-hmm. just trying to explain and give the, give the commissioner as much information as they possibly could on how important you know, it is to get another ambulance. Another so truck. if we passed a few years back to have another crew, ambulance uh, and half crew. Half traffic. I mean, I think it was. They call how do you it have a half, half truck? truck? <laughs> I don't know. So half an ambulance. That's, that's what they call it. You want the first part of the truck or the half, call, second yeah. half of the ambulance? That's the way they described it, a half a truck. So, All right. just, so I don't it works half the hours, okay. But they're still trying to, and I said, they they're, they have they have three job openings right now, but they just haven't been able to fill them. No one's applying. No one's applying. Yeah, so. yeah, welcome to the world out there. It's just tough. We've been looking for employees here at the radio station for months now and can't but, find anyone decent. We'll have a lot more from them. I said, just a lot, of, a lot of discussion, a lot was said, but... It's hard to get it all in one newscast, so we'll have more from the meeting tomorrow here on the local news because Commissioner Tim Hopkins had some good comments. So want to get that out tomorrow on the local news. But okay. Hopefully they can, you know, the bottom line, like they said at the end of the meeting, they just want to address this issue and solve the problem. So right. hopefully they can get it resolved. Okay. As the last thing they need another lawsuit. No, but, that's like, right. but like you said, when you pick up the phone and dial 911, I mean, you're hoping and expecting somebody to show up definitely but these people you know i said they we're fortunate we got some of the best of the best doing it here in wayne county i mean i mean some of those people in that room i've, I've known for a long long time i mean they've been working in, in that, a long time yeah so they do an excellent job mm. okay well very they get that situation because you're spirit. talking about the the, yeah. the lives of the wayne county right. citizens which is yeah. right it's, Number one priority. (laughs) It's definitely a priority. Yep. All right. We've read this before, but I'm going to go ahead and read again because the deadline's coming up soon. We have this uh, text in when it comes to this um, trip to Washington uh, for veterans. I'm going to read it once more time. Coastal Georgia Honor Flight is seeking war veterans from World War II, Korea War, and Vietnam War for a free one-day trip to Washington, D.C., uh, Washington, D.C.'s war memorials, leaving the Brunswick Airport on Saturday, May 13th. Application deadline is this weekend, Saturday, April 22nd. Is that right? I believe so. Yeah. So the deadline is this Saturday, April 22nd, for vets to go free. All right. Volunteer guardian escorts request $500 donation. For more information, visit online to CoastalGeorgiaHonorFlight.org. CoastalGeorgiaHonorFlight.org. There's going to be guardians sent along for, for, the, for the veterans. There's going to be some medical personnel, all that put together for these veterans to be able to go from World War II, Korea War, and Vietnam War to go to see their war memorials in Washington, D.C. free. And you'll leave from the Brunswick Airport on Saturday, May 13th. Application deadline is this Saturday, April 22nd. Go to CoastalGeorgiaHonorFlight.org for all the information. Those there are veterans that have taken that trip, and they say it's a very enjoyable, memorable trip. So I'd encourage any veteran that hasn't made that trip to sign up. Yeah. I say it's great, just a great, great event. Yeah. I'm sure it is. I mean, they go up there and you know get a trip like this that's free. They've got some guardians along with them, and they get to see the war memorials, and especially important for the ones from World War II to see theirs in Korea and Vietnam. Uh, it's a very emotional for a lot of these guys and gals that could do it of this. So just want to let you know about it. Go to CoastalGeorgiaHonorFlight.org. Fly out of the Brunswick Airport, so very convenient for the folks here in this area. Well, I would, one of the um, emails that we get here, news emails that get in, um, Kirby Smart. Coach Kirby Smart is going to compete in the 2023 Southern Company Peach Bowl Challenge. 
Georgia head coach Kirby Smart will represent the Bulldogs in the 16th annual Southern Company Peach Bowl Challenge charity golf tournament to be held April 30th through May 2nd at Reynolds Lake Oconee outside of Atlanta. A field of 20 current and former college football coaches will compete for a share of a 300000 charity purse. purse. The nation's premier collegiate golf event will be played in two-man scramble format in an 18-hole tournament. The Stableford scoring system will be used to help balance handicaps and encourage aggressive play. Proceeds from the competition will benefit charitable foundations selected by coaches. Coach Smart's winnings will go to the Kirby Smart Family Foundation, which focuses on being champions in the community by supporting and giving back to needy children and families facing adversity. So, we wish Kirby and whoever his partner is going to be the best and bring home a bunch of money for the Kirby Smart Family Foundation. They ought to have a good time up there at Lake Oconee. It's a nice course. Yep, nice course up there. But they got a who's who of coaches. Is, they, is Spurrier one of them? Is Spurrier playing? Because yep. He, he can play. Yep. Yep, he's, he's playing. He's the man to beat. <laughs> According to Tony Kornheiser, that's all we did when he was coaching okay, Washington, D.C. I'll quickly go down the coaches. They're either current coaches or former coaches. Here are the coaches that will be playing in this this uh, golf tournament for charity. And uh, I'm not um, – okay, I'll just say Dino Babers from Syracuse, Shane Beamer from South Carolina, Elijah Drinkwitz from Mizzou, Randy Edsel from Maryland, UConn, Chan Gailey from Georgia Tech, uh, Jim Grove from Ohio, Wake Forest, Baylor, Bobby Johnson, Vanderbilt, Paul Johnson, we all know Paul, Paul Johnson, Navy, Georgia Tech, um, Georgia Southern, they forgot to put that in there, uh, Brent Key of Georgia Tech, Urban Meyer, you know, the different universities he's been at, Jeff Munkin, Dan Mullen, Paul Nardu- Dar- 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 uh, Narduzzi, uh, Rick I didn't know how to pronounce his last name, from Colorado, Washington. Mike Norville from Florida State. Houston Nutt. Tim O'Brien. Kirby Smart. Steve Spurrier. And Dabo Sweeney. Nick Satan's not making the trip. Who? Nick Satan. Nope. That's Nick is not on there. <laughs> it's, it's fun to listen to him talk about how him and Kirby, when they were together at Alabama, they were very competitive. And they played a lot of basketball against each oh, they other. Did? Yeah. So it's fun to listen to those war stories when they talk about how competitive. I mean, they're very competitive, these coaches. I mean, oh, yeah. Well, yeah, so. yeah. Both athletes. I mean, Kirby yeah, was so. a top athlete, so was Saban. But, and that, yeah. They keep that competitive streak yeah. in them. It but, starts young and goes all yeah. through their life. But they compete in everything they do, like I said, in golf. They played a lot of basketball together. So those are the type of guys you don't want to play in Monopoly. <laughs> You know, because they're going to they're gonna dominate sooner or later. They, they take it personally, you know. <laughs> Even Monopoly, you don't want to play against them. More or less, the physical sports. But those, those are the coaches right there. That's a who's who's the coaches that's, right there, Bob. That's a lot of coaches. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of good coaches there, and it's all for charity. But we wish Kirby Smart the best, and hopefully who and whatever partner he's lined up with will win. All right. Braves baseball today. The Braves are going, I think this is nine in a row. Looking for nine in a row. Nine in a row today and taking on um, San Diego. It's an after, afternoon game. Our coverage will begin at 2.55, right at 3, excuse me, at 3 o'clock with the um, leadoff show, first pitch at 4.10. So, uh, afternoon game, Braves baseball right here on 105.5 FM. And they have off tomorrow and be back home on Friday. They whipped up on the Padres last night, eight to one. So, the Braves are playing well. Yep, playing well. Got it going. And uh, we are your Atlanta Braves radio station for Southeast Georgia. Listen to the Braves baseball games all season long, right here on one hundred five point five FM. Anything else, Bob? I just want to remind everybody: come on out tomorrow to support the Yellow Jackets. That all important game and Senior Day tomorrow. So the five seniors be recognized as well. So always a nice ceremony. Okay. All right, Bob. Have a good day. World famous Butch and Bob show right here on WIFO 105.5 FM in Jessup. Big Dog Country Radio brought to you by First Southern Bank, Vans Barbecue, Murphy Builder Supply, and O'Quinn and Associates.